Hi, everyone, and welcome to Bridges. Please don't change your channels. I am not Monica Smelter. There is only one. But I have the honor of hosting Bridges today, celebrating 25 years of God's goodness and grace and Monica's service. And my guest today is the one and only, you guessed it, Monica Smelter. Mm -hmm. Monica, welcome to your program. Thank you, Pastor Barry. I'm, I'm just so glad that you're here today to have us celebrate. It's an honor to be asked. And, you know, when, when I received the call to come and, and, mm -hmm. and, and do this, I, remind, I was reminded of my first time on your program, and I was oh. so nervous. You were? I was tremendously nervous. Oh, my and goodness. And I came in, and the sweetest, kindest person was sitting across from me. Oh. And before you know it, that 28 and a half minutes passed like that. Yeah. But I have to tell you, I'm more nervous today doing your job. Oh, my goodness. Than, than when sorry. I was sitting in the other <laughs> chair. But um, I want to talk about you today. Um, and when I think about you, I have one word that comes to mind. And that word is authentic. Oh, thank you. People see you on television and they see you doing ministry, but they don't see you outside of this realm very much unless they're privileged to come to where you're speaking. And I've checked with your crew <laughs> and your team and I've asked them, what is she really like? Oh my goodness. And they said, just what you see. Aww. You have a real genuine faith. And I'd like for you to talk to us today about how you came to know the Lord. Oh. You know, Pastor Barry, it's the best story of just, so I got saved when I was 13. Wow. And um, that's a young age, but, you know, I had already run away from home a couple of times and skipping school. Like I was doing all the things no parent would want their kid to do. And so my parents at the time were not Christians. And I have a younger brother who has Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. And a, a friend of my mom said that there was a healing service at a local church. Would we like to come? And really, uh, I had no interest in church, but I did love my brother mm -hmm. and I wanted him to be healed. And even my Muslim grandfather and his second wife and family all said that we would go to church. Wow. So here we go to a healing service and I didn't even know what that was. And uh, I was really scared when I got there because I ne had never seen people clap their hands and raise their hands to praise the Lord, right? So I thought, well, maybe that's like the devil worship. Like I truly, I didn't know, it, I, you know, so all, I just wanted to get out of there. I just wanted them to do the healing prayer, like whatever that was. And they did all that. And um, Pastor Gardner came up and I was hoping like to close the service. And he said, well, I can't close the service, but Spirit of the Lord is showing me that there are 10 people who don't know the Lord yet. Wow. And I counted my row and there were 10 of us. And it was the first time, Pastor Barry, that I ever considered, like I always believed the gospel, mm -hmm. but I had no interest in being a part of it. Mm -hmm. And as he said that, I felt myself begin to cry and I, I realized, I know now it's the Holy Spirit. I don't think I knew what was happening mm -hmm. then. And I had a desire to get up and give my heart to Christ. And I asked my mom, can I go up there? And she was kind of exasperated mm -hmm. with me. Sure. Um, Cause I had been F-bombing in the seat all through the service, like mm -hmm. low, like I want out of here. I, I went up there and Pastor Gardner prayed for me. And I remember when he asked me my name, I didn't, I didn't even say my name. <laughs> I said, my mom is Marie Phillips. <laughs> I came with her. And so that's how my faith started on that night. Wow. You know, so, so you did not come from a strong family nope. of faith to begin with. A lot of people don't know that about people in the Bible, like Abraham. Abraham was raised in a pagan household, yeah. yet God spoke to him and called him out of that. Mm -hmm. And he became the father of the faith, not only for the Jews, but for the Christians as yeah. well. So you have a, you're in very good company <laughs> that, that you come from a non-Christian background. That just shows you how God's grace will reach in anywhere there is a heart that's open. You know, that he rescues people. You know, when yes, scripture says that he finds us in a barren and desolate place, he does. Mm -hmm. He found me. I was the one that was lost. Mm -hmm. And that whole healing service and all of that. And so after I gave the pastor the name and, you know, when I went home, I knew that that weight of sin was lifted. Like I mm -hmm. felt differently. You don't have to have a feeling, but I did right. feel differently. And a few days later, 
Pastor Gardner somehow found out my address and he wrote to me, Pastor Barry, and wow. he said, um, you know, Monica, God has a really unique vocation for you and it's gonna require your obedience to follow him. Wow. So my mom and I laughed at the letter because right, I flunked every subject in school in the seventh grade. Like, really? yeah, I, I didn't try, I didn't do any, I, like I was just a brat and I'm thinking, I don't know what a unique vocation is, but that, whatever. And my mom said to me, she says, you know, Monica, your dad and I, we don't want to go back to church, but if you want to go, we'll drive you. And they did faithfully every Sunday morning, Sunday night and Wednesday night, they took me. And that's how I grew in faith was that ride to church and Pastor Gardner investing in my life. It's amazing to hear how the grace of God reaches into the heart of a young girl. And now this pastor writes to you and he tells you, you have this big mandate <laughs> from God over your life. And your mom was going, no, I raised you. I know you better than that. Um, yet you feel this tug and this call mm -hmm. into ministry. Talk to me uh, about how God worked in you, how you knew you were supposed to do what you're doing today. Yeah. So, you know, as I continued to attend church, you know, Pastor Gardner talked about, you know, praying about what God would have you do and, mm -hmm. you know, that sort of thing. And um, when I was in high school, I definitely felt the pull to TV. Mm -hmm. Now, at that time, Pastor Barry, I thought that, you know, what I had in my head was that I would be like a news anchor. Like, that's really mm -hmm. all I knew. And that as a news anchor, that in personal times I could share my faith with people. So I started, you know, along that line of thinking, well, someday I'll go to college, I'll study communications and this is what I'll do. So that's kind of how it got started. And then over the years, God refined that and gave me more clarity and helped mm -hmm. me understand not an anchor. <laughs> Although I could see that. Thank you. <laughs> I could see that. I'm Monica Smelter and here's the news. That would work. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought that I would do, but that's not what God had. And so, but I, even when I went to college, I was still thinking that that's what I would do. Mm -hmm. But when I graduated from college and went to put together the demo reel and all the things that you do, I definitely sensed that God said, no, don't do that. Mm -hmm. And then wow. I thought, what in the world now? Like I've done all this, what mm -hmm. will I do? And my parents were like, what do you mean you, you're not gonna do that? Like you just went to college for that. And I, all I could say is, well, God said no. You feel like God spoke to you and, and said no to that. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that experience. Were you praying about that or did you just have this? Because lots of times when, when we as Christians say, God told me right. or God spoke to me, the person who may not have a relationship with mm -hmm. God doesn't get that right. and they wonder how it happens. How right. did that happen for you? So I was praying about it mm -hmm. and asking God to help me put the demo reel together and to make the right context mm -hmm. and all of that. And whenever I prayed about that, I just felt silence from God. Like I didn't, like in a still small voice, mm -hmm. it just didn't seem right. Mm -hmm. It just didn't seem like he was gonna want me to try to go through that door. And I know it can be confusing because you know, when people would say to me, well, God said, I think, well, did he say it out loud? Right. What did he do? It was a still small voice. I just didn't feel comfortable with it. And it was awkward because I didn't want to <laughs> tell my parents, right? Right. Because right. On, on my mom's side of the family, I'm the first woman to ever graduate from high school. So no one wow. ever thought that I would go to college. I mean, and I had been a brat. Who would think that mm -hmm. I could do that? So this was a big deal in my family. And now I was saying, no, I'm not going to do that. And I don't know what kind of work I'm going to do. That has to be a blow for uh, your family, knowing that you've made it further than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And now you get in this, along this path, you're walking and you stop yeah. and you say, God has something different. I'm a firm believer in, and you may want to chime in on this. Sometimes God will allow us to think whatever we need to think so he can position us where he wants us to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> like I had never heard of Christian TV in high school and I don't think that I would ever think that I would work in ministry. I, I definitely would have never felt like I would be worthy of that. Mm -hmm. And I realize now that thinking is wrong, but mm -hmm. at the time it was all I knew. Right. So I definitely think God just allowed me 
to go through that because I needed that training. Mm -hmm. I needed that development. Yes, you did. And even though that wasn't the way that he worked it out, I needed to do all of those things. Mm -hmm. I, I can identify with your story, having mm -hmm. come to Music City, USA, mm -hmm. to do music. <laughs> and I end up pastoring the most wonderful people in the world. And often when I share Amen. my story, I share that very thought. Sometimes God will allow us to think what we need to think to mm -hmm. position us where we need to be yeah. because he has a master plan. He does. You mentioned something I'd like to, to pick up on. You didn't feel worthy of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, when I was growing up, the minister, there was God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and then the minister. Absolutely. It was like he was the fourth person of Absolutely. the Godhead. Yes. And, and And today we're just finding out more and more that people who are called by God are human beings yes. that struggle with human issues, mm -hmm. yet they have found the secret of grace. Mm -hmm. And how do you manage, because you spend a lot of your time pouring out, and but you have a personal life as well. Yes. How do you manage uh, your calling that God's given you with Monica, the person every day? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. And that's something I think that changes right over time mm, and yes. how and how yes. you do it and i think that it's easier for me now that you know when i first started to walk through all of that but i think that i m my thought process is and my hope and prayer is that i'm the same person all of the time mm -hmm. i'm glad that i don't struggle with feelings of unworthiness anymore because i've right. learned right that he makes he makes yes, us he worthy does. and that all my thoughts about the pastor and I hold all pastors in very yes. high regard and yes. Pastor Gardner, who helped me and grow in my faith. I hold him in such high regard. But now I realize that he is just a person yes. like me. Yes. Right. And I I cut myself some slack. Right. Because I'm just a person and I'm not perfect and I'm never going to be able to be perfect. But I can be wholly sold out to Christ. Yes, you can. Yeah. You know, I find often that um, when you minister for uh, not just your calling, but it's your vocation, it's right. your full-time job, it's what you do, and it's more than what you do. It really is who you are. It really is. That is, it's easy to feel like God's employee. Yeah. But more and more as I grow in knowing the Lord, mm -hmm. before he wants to be anything, he wants to be my father. Yes, yes. How do you retreat to him? Because I know the load of what you do can mm -hmm. be very heavy. Yeah. How do you just retreat to your father? Yeah. So that's my favorite time. Yeah. And it was hard for me to do that, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm trying to carry this load and I'm trying right. to be perfect. And, you know, that's how that's just how I'm wired. Right. <laughs> but I will say this for anyone who would dare to just take that quiet time and sit and let mm -hmm. him be father. And whether that means for me that those tears need to roll mm -hmm. and all of my frustration about the things that I'm trying so hard mm -hmm. to do and I think that I'm failing at or that I'm not doing enough, when I will be honest with him, he meets me every yes. single time. And he's so much better to me than what I would think. Mm -hmm. Every day that I grow in Christ, I realize how much more he loves me and how much more he loves others Yes. And he just wants to be our dad. Mm -hmm. And it isn't it great that, you know, when, when you first start spending time with God, you treat it almost like you're in front of an audience that right. you're speaking to. And you're, this is part of your disciplines of your job. But really what you're doing is stepping away from all that like yeah. Jesus did. Mm -hmm. The Bible says Jesus often withdrew to quiet yeah. places to pray. That's because it was his father. He was spending father yes. time. Well, you mentioned Christian broadcasting. Mm -hmm. So tell me how Monica Smelter, <laughs> the national news anchor, becomes a, a television minister to yeah. that with a ministry that reaches into what over 45 million homes. Yeah. So it's it's very funny. I heard an ad on the radio after I had told my family, you know, I can't be a news anchor. Blah blah. <laughs> uh, that the Detroit Rescue Mission was high, needed someone to write copy for radio ads mm -hmm. and to recruit volunteers. Now, God didn't speak out loud, but my heart leapt when I heard that ad and I thought, that's me. So I applied for that job and they hired me and they told me it was because I was the only one that applied. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> God set you up. <laughs> yeah. So I wrote the radio copy and then they decided that they wanted to do a telethon to raise money for the ministry. Um, the Detroit Rescue Mission does a great work mm -hmm. with homeless people providing uh, kind of a residential rehab for men and now for women. But when I was there, it was just for men. Uh -huh. And they came to me and they said, hey, you have a degree in TV. Can you produce a telethon? <laughs> I'm like, oh, of course I can produce a telethon. I, I had no idea how to do it, <laughs> but I was so excited. So I did, I produced the telethon, I put it together. Um, God brought all the pieces together. There were um, a very well-known advertising agency in the area said they wanted to build the set. I mean, God brought every last piece together. Every piece. Every single piece. And before we went to meet with the TV people who were gonna do the production, my boss said to me, you know, Monica, we don't give the women the men's job. So when you go into that meeting, don't say anything, just take notes. And I said, yes, sir. Wow. So we go in, we have this meeting, and um, the president of this TV company is asking some questions. Pastor Barry, I just overwhelmingly felt like I needed to answer, mm -hmm. but I had been told not to speak. So I just raised my hand about this high, and the guy called on me, and I answered, and we talked a little bit. And afterward, he said, Monica, can you stay? a couple of minutes and I thought, okay, so now I'm going to get it because sure. I wasn't supposed to speak, but I was very gentle when I spoke. I didn't, you know, you always are. Yeah, may I, I, I knew that. Okay. And the man was Glenn Plummer, president of the Christian television network in Detroit. And he says, I've never done this before, but God told me I'm supposed to offer you a job. Amazing. Yeah. And I said, well, I said, um, I would love to work in Christian TV. I have to talk to my husband. And I said, I have to talk to the rescue mission. And I have to finish that project. Like mm -hmm. I can't, he said, oh, he said, I'm on their board of directors, which I didn't know. He said, no, you have to finish the project. We have to do everything right. And that's what, that's how I did it. That's, that's how I got to Christian TV. I love what you said. One thing was just kind of dead to you. You didn't feel anything when you talked to God about it, mm -hmm. but then this thing quickened you. Yeah. And that may be a, a lesson for your viewers mm -hmm. that if we'll learn what, what quickens us, yes. you know, our passion and uh, coupled together with our abilities that God has given us, when we find those two things yes. together, it's a big arrow toward purpose. Right. And right. I'm, I'm so glad you recognized it. Um, you brought up something else mm -hmm. and uh, you're so good at this from either chair. I just want you to know, mm -hmm. but you brought up the fact that you were a woman <laughs> in a boardroom with a, with a bunch of men yeah. and you were relegated to taking notes, mm -hmm. but you had a, a meek courage. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that really describes you a lot. You had a meekness, but you have a courage that goes with that. And you spoke up. Um, unfortunately in the body of Christ, we face some of that same yeah. mindset with women. So you're a, I, I know you personally. You are a God called minister of the gospel to, to the, everyone, not just to women. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you are to everyone. And there are some people that have a struggle with that yes. based on maybe a misunderstanding of scripture, well intended, not to throw rocks Absolutely. at them. Absolutely, yes. But how have you found being a woman in the ministry? What kind of challenges is it brought to you and how have you overcome them? Yeah, so it's brought lots of challenges. That's just one example. You know, mm -hmm. I, there was another time I was in headquarters of a large ministry and I was invited to the meeting, but apparently the gentleman in charge didn't know. He, he didn't wow. want a woman there, so he, he told me to leave. So that was just really embarrassing, right? Sure. But I decided early on that I was not gonna be offended about any of that because I don't wanna be anywhere wow where somebody doesn't want me to be. Right. And if I really trust the Lord, and I do, and I'm still learning how to trust Him, that I would just trust Him to put me wherever I needed to go and that I would be okay with that. Mm -hmm. So I know some people won't understand that, but I feel like even if I'm not treated well, I, do, I don't have to be a doormat, but I don't have to get all upset about it. Right. I can just trust God. And I would say that to any woman, God will get you where you need to go and give you what you need to do. And we're not looking for approval from people anyway. 
Right. And I've noticed that about you, you do what you do for him. Amen. And you can't always worry about what other people think no. or what their perspective on what you're doing is. No. Um, first of all, as I look at the scripture, and I don't mean this negatively towards men because I am a man of and, and I can't sell out my own kind, right? No. But I see that it, that men were hiding for fear of the Jews at the crucifixion of Jesus yeah. and the women were going to the tomb. Exactly. So it was the courage of the women mm -hmm. that, and it was the, the woman that first received the message of the resurrection and Jesus said, go tell it. He did. And he spoke to you mm -hmm. and he said, Monica, go tell it. He and did. you have been telling it to millions of people for 25 years. Uh, what would you go back and say to the Monica 25 years ago if you could sit down with her? Well, you know, I, I think one of the things that I would say is in some regard, probably have a little bit more fun with it. Like I was so nervous, right? Sure. And I was such a perfectionist. And I'm just overcome with gratefulness that God even allowed me to do any of it. Mm -hmm. um, I probably at the beginning would have said, be even more bold and be more strong mm -hmm. and share uh, with people. Uh, when I first started, I didn't share much about myself personally at all because I was uncomfortable with some of it coming mm -hmm. from an unchurched family. But I would say have more fun and share more. And I've, I've been able to do that over the years, you, you know, sure to share more and more and to do that. But that's what I would say. One of the things as a pastor that's special to me about you mm -hmm is that you have a real heart for the local church. Yes, I do. Would you, uh, I noticed that you, it, it's almost like in the old days, you would say you went through the phone book, now you may Google, but it's almost as if you just pick random people or the people that God lays on your heart. Mm -hmm. You bring pastors in from all over Middle Tennessee. Yeah. You share with them a platform. You promote their churches. Mm -hmm. um, you're, you don't see your ministry at the expense of theirs no. or theirs at the expense of yours, but you really form a partnership with the local church. Mm -hmm. Why do you have such a heart for that? Well, my whole spiritual foundation came from a local church, mm -hmm. from a local pastor, Pastor Gardner. I would have nothing if I, he taught me everything. He, he taught me everything from the scriptures. I didn't even let sit with other people from the youth group. I just want to sit up front and listen to Pastor Gardner and take notes. His investment in my life. And I look at that and I think, well, all, how about all the other people that are in local churches today that mm -hmm. don't have that at home? They need that. They need that pastor. I never realized, Pastor Barry, the sacrifice that Pastor Gardner made. Like, it looked easy to me. Like, he yes. just got up there and preached and prayed. And, like, it was just amazing to me. Now I realize that he was just a person, mm -hmm. right? He was probably in his 40s back then. And he was getting up every day in spite of his personal challenges. And he was preaching the gospel Amen. to me, to everybody. But I desperately needed it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I one time I, it's funny, but I paid to take a cab when I was like 13 or 14 to go talk to Pastor Gardner. I don't know that he knew that I took a cab, but my problem was I wanted my family to come to church. Mm -hmm. And I thought if I went and talked to the pastor, he could solve that. Yes. <laughs> People are still under that misnomer today, yes, by the way. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and what he said to me is, he says, Monica, I think God is calling you to step up in your family and pray for the salvation of your family. And because I loved him and respected him, I didn't tell him that I thought that I was never going to be able to do that, that I was totally mm -hmm. frustrated with his answer. But I thanked him and I took the cab back home. And after I processed it through, I realized I could take that challenge. Yes. And I could pray for my family. Yes. And so what people don't realize is pastors can't solve everything, but they can challenge us and lead us according to scripture. Yes, they can. And that's what he did. And I've seen all of my family members come to Christ. My parents, it took 25 years of prayer before they came, but they came. Praise the Lord. And so I love local pastors because they have the ability to invest in people's lives. And that's what I want. I want everybody who wants Christ to be able to hear about the Lord, to be able to know how much he loves them. I want people to have the hope that, that we have in Christ. You know, you said your pastor made it look easy. Yep. And I'd like to just share with everyone watching, she makes this look easy, but it's not. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been a wonderful time to get to spend with you. And 
you are celebrating 25 years. And um, I want you to know that Generation Changers Church, my wife, Kathy, and myself, we love you deeply. Thank we you. hold you in the highest esteem. Yeah. Um, they say never hang out with your heroes mm. because they could disappoint you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but you, Miss Monica, are not a disappointment. Oh, thank you. You are a genuine servant of the Lord. Uh, you're filled with His grace for others, and it comes through in everything you do. And we have just a small gift we want to share oh, with you. Oh, oh. Um, and and part of it just came out of, of Josh's basket over there. Okay. There you go, Josh. That's what happens yes. on TV, Pastor and, Barry. And it Josh, just never goes the you, way buddy, we think. Thank you, buddy, for coming on camera. Oh, my it, gosh. Uh, <gasps> you can give a, a big hand. But, but we have a small little oh, gift basket you. for you. Oh, my gosh. And, um, thank you. Thank you. And if you. there's anything healthy at all in there, mm -hmm. it didn't come from me. Praise the um, Lord. It, it would have come oh my from gosh. someone else. Well, no. no there's and, some water. That's healthy. There's water, yeah. yes. And the oh rest of it you can share with your friends. Oh, yeah. And just briefly, in this envelope, uh, I felt led for Generation Changers Church to bring you a love offering, $100 for every year that you've been in the ministry. Oh. And uh, so there's a check for $2,500 to support Monica Smelter and anything that Monica needs uh, to be who, who you are Thank and what you. God is oh my doing. Gosh. Uh, we couldn't say we love you enough and we appreciate you enough. And if you've mm -hmm. ever had the opportunity to meet this lady in person, you'll have to agree with what I'm saying here. God has graced you. He's gifted you. you. You're a gift to the body of Christ and mm -hmm. to the world. I appreciate that so much. Thank you. Thank you for all of this. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. It's my honor. Thank you for allowing oh, me to goodness. be with you. And uh, Josh will be happy. There's an apple pie in here. There's an apple we pie for Josh. We were just talking about that. Yeah, we were just talking about it. Awesome. Thank you, Pastor Barry. Thank You're more than you. welcome. I so appreciate it. Oh, there's chocolate. There's chocolate. <laughs> Thanks for watching Bridges. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings and interviews. It's easy to do. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter and click subscribe. Once you are subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available to view. Thanks for watching Bridges. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event.